Got up, went we to went Ure. Or Ure, which we got there like four. Unloaded people. Oh, opening this door is like a peacock spreading its feathers. The, they just crowd for miles to come see this. This and this. They were taking pictures of us unloading everything, talking to us, interviewing us. There's so many microphones in our face, I couldn't hardly see. Uh huh. It's 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 exhausting. I'm looking forward to being out on a bus for a little bit. <laughs> the bus has been the best part about this. <laughs> we don't bash her. <laughs> Foot to the floor, baby. Uh, I can see it. What is that? Twenty-five. Matching numbers dub ya. Look at that. Here is the ultimate schoolie toy hauler. So like I said in the uh, previous video, our plans were to turn this thing into a big Jeep hauler, take it across the country, have a lot of fun with it. So we did just that. And by we, I mean Tony at the shop here made the door for us. So first what he did was uh, make some hinges here. These are out of 3 8 thick steel. The first hinge bolts uh, to the bottom here. Relatively straight corner off the body. The problem is the next hinge, you can see the bus slopes. That hinge must be equal to that one. And the third one, the bus slopes even more. So all three hinges are different because they all have to line up together. So, so what you do is you take a piece of iron, angle iron, and put them together make sure they're all straight and then you kind of weld and bolt up as necessary so they're all three their own different angle then after those are mounted then you slice the bus door all the way around so kind of follow the curve here around the edge and then uh, it's got a nice trim piece over that so it's sliced all the way around and uh, the whole thing swings open even uh, the part down here right above the bumper so we'll go inside We just got back from our trip a couple days ago and we're kind of cleaning it out now and then uh, the new owner is about to pick it up so we got a little bit of trip things in here still. On the inside we've got e-track flooring which made it super easy for the Jeeps because we could click in our straps anywhere we wanted them to. And then another cool thing was that uh, we shortened these wheel humps so the original Thomas uh, wheel wells, I don't know why but uh, they make them way taller than what's necessary. Right now the bus is totally bottomed out on the suspension. There's no air in the system. So it's sitting as low as it can possibly go and it's still not touching these wheel well humps. So it's one solid piece from down all the way up and then just welded the original sides back onto that so you could just see the difference in height there. So we do that to both sides. Now this door seals 100% the reason why it's leaking around the corner here is because uh, someone didn't latch this thing. Here's a good shot of the suspension, totally unloaded. You can see there's no room uh, between the wheel well and the tire. Unlike up front, that's got a ton of room. That's because the airbags are 100% deflated. We still got all this clearance for a wheel well, all the way up to here. So the way I bolt in the e-track, I wanted to do the bolts at about every window seal in between the pillars there. So I'd measure how far off the wheel wheel hump I could drill the first holes, crawl underneath, make sure there's no cross member or anything underneath, drill it, bolt it, then the next one I measure off the head of the bolt to this, then crawl underneath to make sure the measurement was safe to drill, drill it, bolt it, etc. all the way down, all sides. Kind of bummer I can't show you in the video how sealed this thing really is, but it's been pouring down rain all day. And we just got a little bit here, 
and then a little bit also over here because the side was not latched. However, on our trip it rained a little bit and we actually slept in here as well. We experienced no rain on the inside. My Jeep was never wet, straps were never wet. So normally none of this is ever wet. So what you do is uh, there's two different hinges on the bottom here. You can see where we cut the uh, bus out and uh, there's a new steel frame on the inside which I'll show you. The bus is also cut on on this side. So it's got simple latches, you just undo that. And you see just how loose it is without the latches on, that's why it leaked. This here, and then all you do is just take one hand and you push her open. It is freaking awesome. So you come down here, now our trailer wiring we had another shop make it, and uh, I don't think they realized how far the door swung open, so the wires can get caught if you're not careful, but uh, it just swings open like that. So now you kind of see a bit better of how uh, the door was cut. And then this frame was added all the way around the inside of the door, and that's what this weather strip seals to. So it keeps it nice and sealed. Also on both sides, this here, weather strip right here keeps all nice and sealed and then the bottom of the bus is cut along that edge and we have the original door so this is cool because you got the original windows the original lights and truly the value of the bus I mean it looks way better with the original door on here than uh, if it did not have it now this thing is very versatile you can push this all the way around to the other side of the bus if you truly wanted to. Just gotta, I could snip that wiring and pull it out a little further, but. So if I want to snip the trailer wiring, we would get an extra foot right here if we wanted to, and that door would actually sit all the way against the side of the bus, so. That is what she looks like, all opened up. And people loved it everywhere we went. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. We had tons of people asking us to take our pictures. They wanted to help us unload. I mean, tons of questions. They asked if we were gypsies. It was just a good experience for all. Alrighty, now to shut the door, you just grab it. And you push her all the way around. I'm gonna come over here and check my trailer wiring. And then, like I said, this is all wiring for the trailer. The actual bus wiring is in the door and it would never uh, get pinched. That's just because we had the trailer hitch right there. So do this. And you're going to give a little firm push. Just like that. Alrighty, now from the inside you got your door pushed. So just take these latches, like so. Grab it. Look at that, one hand, effortless. Same thing down here. Effortless. Now here's the coolest part about the whole thing. Open that bad boy up. Still works. That's not awesome, I don't know what is. This was definitely a pretty sweet bus. Uh, I'm really glad we had the experience to use it. And uh, we actually had the thing pre-sold before we even left on our trip. A uh, local guy really liked it, wanted to buy it, and uh, did not mind having the conversion on it. So I guess the last little showcase here of uh, modifications for the trip. We used uh, two chairs out of a, like a conversion van. And I welded up these uh, brackets right here that go down to the floor bolt through grade 8 bolts. So you got one here, one here, then between the seats I wired up a power inverter. This is a pretty big one and I uh, ran the wires right through the floor there and I actually have it hooked up to the battery shut off switch so when that shut off the inverter shut off. So we were able to run a little fan off of it uh, right down here you could charge your cell phone on I mean, pretty much everything you can reach it from the driver's seat 
You were close enough that you had a companion while you're driving, but far enough that you had your own personal space, so that was really cool, especially on a week and a half long adventure. So there she is. There's bus number 58 of Warsaw School signing out.